Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're going to make an arcade full of arcade machines for Brick Nottingham. Now the concept of doing arcade machines or an arcade is nothing new, that's for sure, but it is something that looks very effective in LEGO, and it's something that I want to have on full show in Brick Nottingham. So with that in mind, I think I'll have a go as well. Now, LEGO have released a few official arcade machines, the best of which, and definitely the most attractive in my mind, is this wonderful Defender sort of Space Invaders game, which was part of set 71235, the Midway Arcade level pack, which was a clear dimensions uh, upgrade. And that is a beautiful machine. Uh, but they've also done a few in the Simpsons Quickie Mart, and there's even one on set 41231, Harley Quinn to the Rescue, which I actually have the sticker sheet for. So I could actually use that as the screen and that one there as the joystick and buttons uh, to make my own version of that as well. But I'm not going to. I'm going to go completely freestyle. So I won't be using this wonderful one as well, at least not in my arcade. I'll probably have this on the back of a lorry or something like that later on being transported about. So as with everything I do, I'm trying to maximize diversity and variety. So I'm gonna try and do six machines of my own making that are completely different from each other. So the first type of machine I want to build is a first person shooter. So you know the ones where there's an actual sort of 3D gun which you hold and fire at the screen at the advancing hordes of zombies or what have you. Uh, so that will be quite a fun game to have, I think, in my arcade. So what I need for that to start with is a base of 2 by 4 plate. I've actually got two 1 by 4s in dark red. Then 2 by 3 and a grill piece. Then I need to have two modified one by two bricks with studs on the side, two two by two plates, two one by one bricks with studs on the side, nice and straight, and then a one by two by two brick at the back. Then we need to mount our screen, so we'll need a hinge brick with one of these two by two plates. And then let's do the gun next. A two by two inverted slope. And then on the front, a jumper plate with a one by one round plate. So it can hold very firmly one of these sort of gripper tong type pieces. That will hold the gun in a minute. But then we need to add a screen and for this, I've just used random stickers from my collection. So you can see the middle one and the bottom one are from Ultra Agents and they say target engage and alert and it's sort of got some crosshairs on and kind of an energy bar and all the rest of it. And then one at the top, which I think was uh, a superheroes one, almost looks like a rear view mirror or something like that, doesn't it? With a, a big monster in it. So maybe he's what's coming along in the next level or something like that. So altogether, they make a very large two by four screen. Then at the top, I've just got one of those modified plates with studs on the side, so I can add a plate with a number one on it and a curved slope, and that will represent the sort of canopy bit at the top. And then just to hide all the workings, I've got these six by three wedge plates, which can go like that on each side. So that's kind of a white and dark red one, which just needs actually, doesn't it, of course, the gun. And I think that's about to scale, so Robin could have a good game on that. So that's the first one, a first person shooter. For my second arcade machine, I want to make a driving game. And a lot of those are actually kind of based on sitting in an actual sort of mock car 
uh, so you can actually pretend you're driving a bit more easily. And if a lot of you remember back in the day, there was a game called Outrun, and that was very much about escaping the police in a great big Ferrari. So I thought I'd do something along those lines. So we're going to need a 2x8 plate with a steering wheel on. Then I've got two modified bricks, 1x2s again. Doesn't matter what colour these are because they're going to be covered up. Then a 2x2 two two plate. And then I've got this screen, which is actually a 2x2 two two slope piece. And it kind of shows some perspective. It's, it's from loads and loads of Star Wars sets. It's quite common. Um, but I couldn't find one that looked like the open road. But this will do because maybe it's kind of a Tron racing game or something like that. Who knows? So there we go. Uh, and then we're going to build with two one by two plates and a one by two bracket piece. And then we can have some more sort of display as well with maybe a speedometer and some warning lights and all the rest of it above that. And then a top two by two tile. And then for the sides, I'm using these uh, two by four tiles, which are uh, from the cars set, uh, Max Team Truck 8486. And they're very nice as well. It gives a bit of a racing sort of impression. So there's a two by four uh, plate as well as a two by four tile on each side, just to give it a bit of depth. Then for the dash, I'm just gonna add a bit of detail onto a one by four plate lifted up by two one by two plates and that's just so I can put a bit of the bodywork in represented by these one by three slope pieces if I put that over there then you'll see that sort of represents a little bit of the body of the car for when you're sort of climbing into the machine then I thought, well, why not have actually a set of real wheels? So it actually really feels like a car when you get in it behind the seat. And then just to make it all complete, we'll have a jumper plate at the back, a one by one uh, round plate. And it's important it's the one with a hole because we want the one by four tile spoiler to be able to be put on centrally. So that will be like that. So it very much looks like you're getting into kind of the back of a Ferrari race car to uh, have your driving game. So I'm sure there's better ways of doing this, perhaps, and I'm sure there is a, lots of third-party sticker sets available to make this even more realistic. But as with everything, I'm trying to use genuine Lego pieces only, just because that's what I prefer. Uh, and I think that, is a good start. Good, good. Right, to keep up the diversity, I've gone for a completely different colour, so we've got orange for this one. And this one I thought would be a space shoot 'em up sort of kind of like a Space Invaders. And with that in mind, I've got this tile, which is a 2x2, two two, one with what looks like a sort of space cockpit with some crosshairs around what's either a Lego head or sort of an asteroid is the way I think of it. Now that's a tile that was available with a lot of the Alpha Team sets from 2004. But I thought it would be kind of like that old game Asteroids where you had to just go around shooting all the asteroids so they didn't bash into your ship. So let's try and do that. So much like the Midway game, I'm going to use these wedge plates as the base. Add on two by three plate and a grill. Next level, one by two plate, one by two plate and one of these. Not essential, but it gives it a bit more detail with these sort of bars sticking out. So that's quite good looking. Then for the front, we're going to need another inverted slope. And then for the controls, a jumper plate and then a one by one modified plate with the clip. 
and kind of a pair of handlebars. And I thought it might be one of those space games where you have to direct it by a different means of control. So it'd be kind of like a flying yoke. And then we can put another one by two in orange just behind that to keep it nice and tidy. Then for the tower, I've got four modified bricks in this dark orange color. And I'm using that just because they aren't a uh, bad clash with the orange color and also because I've got them really. Again, they're going to be very largely hidden, if not entirely hidden. So um, you can pretty much use whatever color you want. Then two by uh, two one by two plates, two more bricks modified with a stud on the side. One more of those, one by two plates. Then we can put the screen in, and another one of these hinge bricks with the tile on. So that could just go there. That's nice and visible. And then at the top, another one of these modified plates with the studs on the side. Curved slope, two by two, an orange. And then a one by three tile, and I've just put on a sticker that came from the um, 6864 Batmobile and Two-Face Chase set, because I don't really need any of those stickers for that. So this is just to give it a bit more sort of interest and detail. And then the final part is these two two by four curved slopes, which can just kind of clip on all of that and give it a bit of bulk a bit of a pleasing shape. So there's our third one, a Space Invader game. So for this game, I thought I'd do a different type of machine again. And this one I'm going to base on kind of a joystick game. So if you get a Technic brick with these two holes in it, you can actually use the pin piece that has the ball joint as a joystick, which is actually quite an effective way. You can do other ways as well like using a microphone piece or something like that but you've got to admit that that looks very much like a two-player game with two joysticks next to each other so this game is a different color again being it's lime and it's built in a very different way so we've got a one by two bracket with a one by two plate on top then we're going to have that supporting a forward facing two by four plate which we can put black tile, a gray grill, then the screen at the top overhanging. And that's all green, which is good. So it sort of ties in with the theme of the uh, color of the uh, machine box itself. And it's kind of got a flying dinosaur there, maybe a pterodactyl or something like that uh, in the crosshairs. So maybe it's a, a dinosaur hunting game because it definitely came from a dinosaur hunting set, or the dino sets like uh, 5883 from 2012 is where that came from. And then we can add the joysticks underneath. And on top of that, we can just put a one by two tile just to finish it off so it hasn't got any studs showing. And I've put on some sort of painted scrapes like it's sort of been attacked by a dinosaur. And those, there's another one here, are from a number of Ultra Agent sets that I've just applied to these lime tiles. Uh, so then we need a one by two plate there, just to finish off that front construction. Now, for the rest, we're going to do some studs on the side. So we first of all need a one by one, and then a one by four brick. It's quite a clever technique, this one. And then we can use that to support a number of tiles to make it look like it's got very smooth sides. So first of all, a two by two, then a one by three, to make sure they're all lined up nicely, and then another two by two. So if we do that on both sides. And that does have a very pleasing way of sort of meeting absolutely perfectly on the front of this thing. So it really does look like it's got no studs on any surface. And then we'll have a one by two brick facing forward. 
and plate. And then we can have a one by three, or rather two by three wedge plate on each side, which sort of produces a bit of the canopy, which we can then finish off with our two by two tile. And there it is. And that in a way I think is probably the best of all of them so far. It's just so smooth and looking good from all sides and the colors fantastic as well. So you can see that's a good scale as well. So there is our fourth one, twin joystick game. Of course, at any arcade, you don't just have a selection of arcade games. You also have a few other machines as well. And one of those is a dancing stage. Not something that I've ever used, but something that just does look so iconic and great fun that I thought I'd have one of those in my arcade as well. So with that in mind, we need a four by six plate. And then we need to put on the colored steps. So I've gone for the red, green, yellow, blue type motif. And you can see that I've used one of the tiles with a stud on it, just so I can add a person when we're finished. Then I'm going to add a couple of one by ones and a little fence piece, because they kind of have like a railing so people can hang onto it whilst doing incredibly fast foot movements. So uh, we'll have one of those. I don't want to make it too high because I want to be able to see the person on it as well. Then we need a one by eight brick and a one by eight plate. And then we need to build some big speakers because they're big machines these and they really do blare out the music. So to build a speaker, we need a two by two plate under there. And then a Technic brick, one by two, one by two plate. Another Technic brick, one by two, but the one with the two holes. And into that, we can press into the single hole, we can press a uh, dish piece. And into the two holes, we can press one by one plates, round, all in light bluish gray. So then that can go onto that bit that we've just made. And we need two of those, so I did one already. So there we are. So there we've got two big blaring speakers, one on each side. Then we need some controls for where you put your money and select what thing you're on. And maybe there's some gauges telling you how well you're doing. And then two one by two bricks to finish off the back there. And we'll do the tops of the speakers with two by two black tiles. So looking good so far. And then there's even more flashing lights all over these things. So I thought I'd do more red, green, yellow, blue by having some of the cheese wedge pieces, one in each color. Just need to straighten those a bit. I think that's pretty much got it. There we go, put that on. So they'll be flashing around. And then another modified brick to take our screen. Now they usually have a sort of singing and dancing motif, so uh, we can use this two by four tile. I've got quite a few of these because I'm going to make a uh, big video wall probably at some point, but um, nonetheless, this is from uh, set 10686, Family House. And it's very appropriate, I think, for this. So we'll put that on there. That's what they're all looking at when they're doing the dancing. Another one by two brick in the middle. And then just so there's even more flashing lights, we're gonna put a one by one modified brick with a bar on it on each side, which we can cap off with a bright neon tile. And then kind of make more flashing lights by way of a one by two modified plate. This one kind of looks a bit like a traffic light. The other one's going to have blue and yellow on. Ooh, there we go. And there we have it. 
Now Robin's far too old and self-conscious to get on one of these things, so what we need is somebody young and enthusiastic. So who better than the N-pop girl from the Ninjago movie? She looks like she's having a great time in a funky N-pop get-up. So I thought she could be throwing some moves and standing on that. Yeah, that looks bang on, doesn't it? Much better than me doing it. Yep, good, good. So there is another one. Number five. And for our sixth and final machine, I wanted to do a pinball machine. Now, these are definitely the uh, machine of choice from my youth. Uh, I used to spend uh, a large amount of time playing pinball, especially on holiday, because they always seemed to have better machines then. So it was very important to me that I had a pinball machine in my arcade in Brick Nottingham. So this one's definitely my own design, because I had to fiddle around with lots of different parts and different ways of doing it to get the effect I wanted. So first of all, if we take a hinge plate, put back to front, as you might see it, put a two by four plate on that, and then two, two by three plates on top of that. Then some more of these modified bricks. We've gone through quite a few of these today, haven't we? And then I've just got a big red button for each side. So that's obviously around tile. And then to sort of represent the playing field, I've just got two more of those trans neon tiles to sort of represent the reflection of the glass and all the bits of the brick that you can kind of see underneath, the kind of the features and the bouncers and flippers and all the rest of it that's inside a pinball machine. Then for the back leg, because we want it tilting up a bit, we need to raise this hinge piece just by one, one by two plate. So we'll have it like, oop, like that. So you see we can have it now just slightly inclined. And then at the back, we need to have the headboard at an angle as well. So the headboard will be supported by another hinge plate, but this time blue. And the headboard itself is two one by three plates, then one by one brick on each side with a one by one modified brick. Aha, uh -huh, there we go just so we've got something to stick our screen on, uh, a one by three plate and a one by three tile. And the screen can go there. Now it doesn't have a score on unfortunately, but it does have a very interesting theme as pinballs always do. And this one is Demon Destroyer from set 8303, which is a racers tiny turbo set. So that can get mounted on the backboard like that. And you'll see it is sloped as it must be, otherwise the ball wouldn't roll down. And then the headboard can be slightly leaning back. And you've got quite bright buttons and therefore Robin can stand at that and play it for absolutely ages. <laughs> Especially while on holiday. So that is my pinball machine. Now for the arcade building itself, I'm using a 16 by 32 base plate, just temporarily. I'm gonna to have to take all this off this base plate when I decide on the final location for this building in Brick Nottingham. But for now, I'm going to build it on this, just so we've got enough space to play around with things. Now the building I want to use to base the arcade on is the bike repair shop from the set City Corner 7641 because it's a building that I've got no use for. It's very simple, uh, it's not got much to it, but I thought I'd use that because it'd be a good open-fronted building that'd be very easy to expand. So I've broken up the bits from that and I'm gonna piece them together here. So essentially we've got a black band of bricks along the bottom, and then some white panels, which are very efficient way of doing things. 
on both sides. Now, as I say, this building will be open fronted because all the arcades I've ever known sort of draw you in by showing you all the flashing lights and all the wonderful machines. And then they'll probably close some shutters at the end of the night. So then the back wall, even more simple, just that run of black bricks along the bottom and top with the panels in the middle. A very cheap building. We can just secure that with some tiles all along the top. And I have put on some of the modified tiles so we'll be able to lift up the roof of this building to peer inside if we ever want to take a closer look. Now, never wanting to leave a surface unused, I have actually put some graffiti stickers on the back of this building. And I'm thinking this building is going to be right next to the train line because it's only one story tall and obviously it's not that deep either, which means it will fit well in that narrow space just along from the River Trent uh, without sort of ruining our view of that sweat or any of the facades that we're going to have up against the wall. But I do want to be able to use the space in between this building and the railway track to show off more details. So on the back, I thought we could have a graffiti artist, maybe armed with a spray can, perfecting her art and actually in the progress of making it. And then there can be another spray can of a sort of lilac colour on the ground nearby. So you'll be able to see that scene and these bits of art from the trains and hopefully from train cam as well, or definitely if you lean that way. Incidentally, these stickers are all from the uh, Shell Razor Street Chase set, which is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle set, 79104. Right, so back to the other side. Now I just need to get all these machines inside. So I won't push them down too firmly until I've got them all in and I'm happy with their spacing. So I think I'm going to have to cram them quite in. That seems a bit close, possibly there. Sort of there, maybe there. That one's got a tile that I need to put in as well. And that would be right up against that side. Does that leave enough room? Ooh, barely, does it? I think I'm gonna have to move that one along a bit. Yep, so it is absolutely crammed, isn't it? But you all know that I really like things to be nice and busy, so that isn't a problem as far as I'm concerned. So let's push these down now. So it just needs that tile there so it looks a bit better. There we go. This one does hang out um, of the front of the building. So when the shutters are down, maybe he sort of turns these machines in, the owner of the place or something like that. But to be honest, I'm not going to worry about little details like that because um, I think it's much better with that in. And this area here will be the pavement or sidewalks so will be in uh, light bluish grey tiles. So um, it won't be as unfinished as it is in this position. Good. So we can still see the sort of tiled linoleum floor that looks sort of very cheap and probably very sticky, if it's anything like my personal experience. Uh, so then all we need is to have a column. I'm guessing that's the center of it in the middle, just to help support the roof, which is a detachable roof, just exactly in the same style as the bike repair shop. I've even kept the security camera that it had on this sort of uh, modified plate with one of those grabber pieces. So that should just fit on there very snugly. Indeed it does. So that's really good. I could have had a white pillar here just to match those, but I thought red would probably be a bit nicer to match with this to sort of create a T shape. And you can see that the edge is lined with those um, one by eight plates that have the rail. And that's just to give the impression that there are some shutter blinds here that can be closed at the end of the night. 
Great. So a bit more detailing, I think. No, we're near busy enough yet, is it? So I thought I'd add a gumball machine just so we can get some uh, sweets while you're playing your games. I thought I'd put that just in front of this pillar. So I think that looks very nice. It's just got one of those swirly tiles on top just to give it a bit more detail. Yep. And then I thought I'd have a couple more players of games. So this is the guy from the Midway arcade level pack set. And I like him because he's got this wonderful sort of Space Invader type uh, T-shirt, which is great. So I don't want to have him playing a game because then you won't see his wonderful T-shirt. So I thought I'd just have him perhaps having just got a high score and being very happy with himself coming off, say, the racing ride. And then maybe this is like the young me, small boy wearing a squids basketball shirt, who's perhaps taking a peek and is fascinated with the pinball machine. So I'll have those all mounted properly on light bluish grey tiles, as I said, when we get up to the Lego room. But for now, you get the idea. We can still see that wonderful uh, dancing stage screen as well. And this is another great example of wonderful colours from all different angles, um, which is just going to add a lot to my city. So another little touch I might add, actually, is giving this young chap a coin, who's just deciding what game to choose. Can he grab that? Yes, he can. There we go. So we'll have him back peering at the pinball. And then what do we need? Well, obviously we need a massive overdone 3D sign for the top. Otherwise it just wouldn't be a Robin Hood bricks build, would it? Right, so for this massive 3D sign, I'm going to use yellow bricks because I think that'll be the biggest contrast towards the black, the red and the white of the main building. Uh, so see how quickly you can guess what I'm building. So you've got two one by twos and then two one by two clear bricks. Now these are just used to help the structure of the build. A one by three. Two one by fours. and four one by ones. Any clue yet? A one by two, a one by one in black, a one by three, well I've done that slightly wrong, move them in. Another one by one in black, and one by two. A one by three and a one by four. You must be getting it now. A one by one in clear. A one by one. And a one by one on top of the clear one. Same on the other side. And what do we have? A Space Invader, of course, from a classic 8-bit game. Fantastic. So we'll just put that on the roof here in the middle. And there we go. Look at that. Let's change the camera angle slightly. There you go. Very smart indeed. Very basic, but very effective. And if you remember, just down from where I'm proposing to put this, just along from the River Trent, there is, of course, the Super Mario mural, which would sort of be just over there. And that's done in the same way as this, just using a one-by-one -one brick for every pixel. And um, maybe it was spray-painted by this lady here. Who knows? But that's another good thing about this sign. It looks exactly the same from the reverse, with no added bricks. Fantastic. So there we are. There is my 
Arcade Machine Arcade. All that remains is for us to take it up to the Lego room and put it in location. And here it is transferred in place in Brick Nottingham, right next to the kebab kiosk and the coffee hut. I think it's looking rather good. I've added a second row of these linoleum tiles just to take it right to the edge now, and I think that looks a little better. Got the gumball machine and everything and all the people in place. So I'll just put the roof on as well. Yeah, and that's looking pretty good, I think. I really like the uh, Space Invaders sign. That looks pretty fantastic as well. Good, good. Now it is a city update, so I'm going to keep up with my New Year's resolution of adding a vehicle each time. So I'm going to add this, which is a set, believe it or not, that's 2584 Biker Bob, which is a souped up trike with these flames coming out the back. Except I've taken Biker Bob off and added on the Series 10 motorcycle mechanic instead, because I think he looks very fitting with that handlebar moustache and his tattoos and so on. So I'll just put that on the road down there. Fantastic. Well, I think this adds a lot of colour to the area, and I think the pixelated Space Invader really goes well near to the pixelated uh, Mario. And we've also got the spray painter on the back side of this as well. So uh, it's all tied together and looking good from all angles. I'm sure I will add some more features or street furniture at the very least to this pavement that's pretty broad in front of the uh, arcade, but I've run out of time today, so I'll do that at a later date. Fantastic. We'll just do a little bit of wobbly hands free, just so you can see it at a lower perspective. There's that wonderful sign. You can still see everything behind it. And we've even got the spray painter behind there. I think you can see that. Very good. Yep, it fits in seamlessly, but it's another bright bit of yellow that's showing from a distance. You can immediately see what it is. So I think that's a really good addition. Cool. So thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, on Monday, we'll be doing the final part of Fast Food Corner, which will be part eight, where we'll be looking at the design process behind that build. And then back here again next Friday for another city update. See you then.